Mmm, coffee. Who are my coffee lovers on here? Leave yes in the comments below if you love coffee. Are you someone who needs their coffee when they wake up in the morning? Or do you love going for your after lunch coffee break at Starbucks? Does the smell, even the sight of coffee, just make you feel so happy, so comforted? Or are you someone that has the whole vibe of don't talk to me, don't touch me until I get my coffee? I totally get it, that used to be me. I was someone that would wake up and needed coffee first thing in the morning, or I was very irritable, very tired. It was my go-to, I had to have it. And it wouldn't just stop at one coffee. I used to have an extra large coffee around lunchtime just so I had the energy to make it through the rest of my day. And we were coffee snobs. We love the organic beans, fresh pressed coffee. It turned into a big social event with me and my partner. We absolutely loved good quality coffee. Until I realized the link between hormones and coffee and I realized how destructive coffee could be to my hormones and I am so sorry I am so sorry because I know I'm gonna break your heart a lot of your hearts in this video it definitely broke mine when I learned this information so what I'm gonna do in this video is dive into how coffee might be negatively impacting your hormonal health I'll also dive into how to transition coming off coffee if you find this might be the next best move for you. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel to be notified when I release new videos every single week. Before I start, I want to acknowledge that I know coffee has a ton of health benefits. It can be very useful in protecting against liver disease, cardiovascular disease, heart attacks, and strokes. However, if your goal is hormonal balance, if you are a high-performing, very busy, very stressed, very ambitious female, then you might want to consider and look into if coffee is actually serving you. We live in a very fast-paced environment, and I know as ambitious, high-performing women, you are always on the go, am I right? And if you're anything like me, I would do absolutely anything to be able to generate the energy I needed to tackle all of my goals. And I used to think coffee was the answer to this. Now, in reality, coffee does give you that short-term energy hit, but it is definitely not a high-performance habit for sustained energy and hormonal health. So if you are a busy, stressed out, ambitious woman with huge goals, then I would strongly recommend coming off of any stimulants. Now it blew my mind, when I came off coffee, when I stopped having that morning drink, I got more energy, right? I was able to have consistent energy throughout the day, there was no crashes, my adrenal response healed a lot better, and I was able to generate that energy myself. Caffeine affects the activity of the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal HPA axis. This is the connection between the hypothalamic and pituitary glands in the brain and the adrenal glands. The HPA axis influences the body's ability to manage and then deal with stress. The adrenal glands release cortisol and epinephrine, and this is going to increase respiratory rate, heart rate, and blood pressure. The cortisol is going to release glucose, which we need more of in times of perceived stress. Now, when we're having caffeine, this is actually going to raise cortisol and epinephrine levels to the same amount that is seen in acute stress. So drinking that coffee often recreates that stress response in our body. Now, a lot of people tend to drink more caffeine when they are under a lot of stress. Exams, a lot of work assignments, job changes. So this is actually making the problem worse. It's adding more stress onto stress. Now, if we have too much cortisol, this is gonna cause our mother hormone, pregnenolone, to continue making cortisol. So what's gonna happen here is we're going to shunt all the resources to creating our sex hormones and instead create just more and more cortisol. This is what causes that hormonal imbalance. Caffeine also increases the development of benign breast disease and increases ovarian and breast cysts. This is especially important for women who have PCOS, fibroids, and endometriosis. If you're suffering with these conditions and unable to manage the symptoms, I would recommend coming off of caffeine. If you have painful, heavy periods or severe breast tenderness, I'd recommend eliminating coffee and all caffeine for three months and you're gonna be blown away by the results that you see. Coffee can also cause an imbalance between estrogen and progesterone in our luteal phase. So caffeine stimulates the nervous system to release more cortisol. This is going to burden the adrenal system and can lead to problems with ovulation. It also leads to anxiety issues and sleep issues. So if you are someone who suffers with anxiety or have problems falling asleep or staying asleep throughout the night, then I would recommend transitioning off a of coffee for at least 30 days and seeing if that makes a significant improvement. Coffee also depletes very important nutrients that are essential for hormonal health, like magnesium, like B vitamins, like folate. These vitamins are needed for hormonal health and also super important for having stable moods and consistent energy. Coffee can also alter our microbiome because of the acidity here. This can affect our ability to absorb key nutrients. If we're not getting the proper nutrients that we need in a day, this is going to lead to even more hormonal imbalance. 
Another thing to consider is do you even have the enzyme to break down coffee? So caffeine is broken down by an enzyme called CYP1A2. If you have a mutation in this gene, it's going to affect your liver's ability to metabolize coffee and excrete it from the body. Based on your gene variation, you'll either have a lot of this enzyme, meaning that you can have a coffee at 7 p.m. and sleep through the night, or have too little, which means that you're strongly affected by caffeine. Maybe it makes you anxious, jittery, or you can't sleep when consuming it. Now this enzyme also helps metabolize estrogen. So if you have only a little bit of this enzyme, your body's gonna be a lot slower at metabolizing coffee and estrogen. And ingesting any kind of caffeine is actually gonna cause this estrogen buildup. Now we're hit with a lot of estrogen dominant symptoms, irritability, breast tenderness, mood swings, heavy periods, cramping. So as you can see, coffee can negatively impact hormonal health, affecting our stress, our adrenals, our sex hormones, so that we are not in perfect balance. Now, how do we come off coffee? Because as someone who has been trying to come off coffee for the last three years, I can say I'm on my most successful stint. I'm about four months caffeine free, and I'm gonna share how I did that with you. So when I was transitioning off of coffee, what I did was half the dose that I was currently consuming. So I was having two cups of coffee a day and I went down to just one per day in the morning. From there, I then halved it again. So I had a full cup in the morning, then I just did half a cup, then a quarter, and I just kept halving it down. As I was decreasing this, this caffeine intake, I also substituted with something that I found as enjoyable. So you could try Dandy blend, you can try a cocoa mix, chai tea, any herbal teas. I even actually switched from going caffeine to decaf first and then went to my chai tea. If you are someone who is absolutely addicted to coffee and can't imagine giving it up, I would recommend this approach over going cold turkey because often the side effects are feeling very low energy, grumpy, irritable, um, even a super low mood if you are just giving it up right away. So I would recommend having the dose, decreasing very slowly, switching to decaf and then switching to a herbal non-caffeinated tea. All right, let me know in the comments below if you are willing to give up coffee for at least 30 days. If you'd like more help in healing your hormones, then make sure you subscribe to my five-day challenge, the Healer Hormone Master Your Metabolism Challenge, where I'm working with very high-performing, ambitious women to skyrocket their energy, to have superior mental clarity so they can perform the best that they want, and also to lose that extra weight so that they are feeling confident and comfortable in their bodies. I'm gonna leave the link in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video was incredibly useful. Make sure you like this video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to my channel so that you are notified when I release a new video every single week. Have a great day.